Okay guys, so I'm making this video on how to change fork seals on uh, this particular video is going to be 03 to 04 Kawasaki ZX6R or 636. Um, I couldn't find any specific videos for this bike so uh, these forks are a little bit different than other videos I've seen. Um, going to do this video and uh, show you how to do this particular bike so hopefully it'll help some people out. Alright so first thing we got to go over is uh, tools. Um, actually no let's go over parts first. So obviously you're going to need some new seals. Uh, these are the oil seals. And this is genuine Kawasaki. The part number is 92049-0001 and that is the actual oil seal. You're going to want two of these because you're doing both forks, or you should be doing both forks. And this is the dust seal. Um, might as well replace this while you're in there, because chances are the one that's on there is all cracked and worn out. And that's what got you in this problem in the first place, probably, is uh, dirt getting up in there. So this is part number 92093-1472. Um, these run about, I think these were $15 a piece and these are sixteen dollars a piece roughly um, so next thing you're going to need is fork oil uh, there's all kinds of different brands this is just what my local shop carries so you're going to need about one liter or one quart roughly um, use about half for each fork this should do both you might want to get an extra one just in case this runs like this brand in particular was like eleven dollars a quart so um, if you're unsure or you're doing this on a weekend where they might be closed and you can't get more, you don't want to get stuck, get an extra quart just in case you spill some. So you're going to use almost exactly all of this. So, Okay, now tools. Um, aside from the basic tools like wrenches and screwdrivers and stuff, uh, there is a couple specialty tools you'll need. One of those is a spring compressor. Now you can buy these for $45 roughly online. Um, for the amount of time or fork seals you're going to do. Uh, if you're watching this video, you probably don't do them all the time. So you just might be doing yours for the first time or a friend's or something like that. Um, I went out and made my own. Uh, I don't like to buy tools that I'm only going to use once or twice. So, especially if they're really simple tools. You know, if it's something complex, that's different. So all I did was go out and get a 3-inch PVC coupler. I cut that in half, I drilled a hole in each end, I put some half inch threaded rod through each end, and tapered the ends. And that's really all you need to do. Um, these ends, when you screw them in, they just go inside of the uh, spring cap into two little holes, and then this gives you some leverage to push down on. So what you want to make sure on this, because it is PVC though, is you get enough nuts that you can tighten these against the outer shell, or the outside ring. Um, that'll give it a lot more strength. If you only have the nut on the inside, I epoxy these in so they don't flop around. It just makes it a little bit easier when you first put it on. But you want to be able to tighten the nut against the outside on each side too, otherwise this will bend and it'll end up cracking the PVC. But this is pretty thick PVC, it's not going to go anywhere. So. That's that. This cost me the PVC piece was a couple bucks, and the threaded rod was a couple bucks. I think I got like seven bucks, six or seven bucks in this whole tool. A lot better than 45. So, okay, another tool you're gonna need to take the axle off is these have a giant inverted hex or giant Allen socket. Um, I believe it's 19 millimeter, something like that. Um, you need a special tool to get this off and you can buy them they're not that expensive but I didn't want to wait for them so what I had discovered is from looking around online is the end of a lot of um, spark plug sockets this hex end actually fits inside the axle really nice so and a lot of these you can actually stick an extension right through the back on my particular socket I don't know if you can see down in there but it's rounded over down there it's not square all the way down so you can't put an extension through the back so what I did is I took an old socket I had and I just put it down inside and I welded the crap out of it um, yeah I know it's not a very good job but 
I made this literally in like five minutes and didn't cost me anything because I had an old socket set laying around. I didn't care about this socket or the one that's down inside. So now I can plug an extension in here. This is actually it's really hard to do one handed. Anyways, this does come out as well. So you just snap it down in there. It's not even that straight, honestly. It doesn't matter. It works. Gets the job done. Okay, another tool you'll need. Um, anything similar to this. You can use this, even a regular wrench, like a open-ended wrench. Has that same shape. Uh, I use this because it's wider. It has a lot more depth to it. What this is going to be is when you compress the spring and you pull up the top cap of the tube, there's a nut on the bottom and there's a rod. Uh, it's a compression rod and you're going to want to snap this in there and it holds that rod from going back down inside and it keeps the cap up and you're going to need that so you can unscrew the cap. So you need something you can jam in there. This works okay, but when you try to tighten or loosen the nut on the bottom of the cap, it wants to move around on it and sometimes it can jump off and fall back down inside. So this is a lot wider at the bottom. You could make this out of something. I just found this in my drawer. I don't even know what this is. Some sort of clamp for a pipe, but it works perfect. So um, you're going to want a set of digital calipers. These run about, uh, depends on the brand. This is just a cheap brand. Um, these were, I think, 30 bucks, something like that. You can get some really expensive ones, but for what we're doing, this works perfectly fine. You can get these at pretty much any auto parts store. It's, it's not, I mean, it's a fancy instrument, but it's, it's nothing that's hard to come by. So you're going to want that. Um, another thing you're going to want is you're going to want a nut or a piece of uh, threaded coupler and a longer bolt with a small head on it. You don't want a huge like a um, carriage bolt head or anything like that. You want something with a fairly small head and you'll see why uh, later on. But uh, they sell a tool from Kawaki that actually threads onto the compression rod and this lets you pull it up because it'll actually be down inside the tube where you can't reach it very well. So I just found any nut that kind of threaded on, it doesn't even need to be the right threads. All it needs to do is go on enough finger tight that you can pull up on it. So you're not cranking this thing on there, it's barely on there. It doesn't take a lot of force to pull that up. So I just found any nut that threaded on to this thing and that threads onto the compression rod just a little bit and I can lift it up. If you want to go through the trouble, you can try to find a nut that fits it perfect. Um, but that works perfectly fine. Socket, this is a 30 millimeter. This is to loosen the top cap. Now the only reason I bring this up in here, I know it's just a socket, but it's a pretty big one. 30 millimeters, fairly large. So you might want to check to see if you have this and borrow it from somebody before you do the job because you will need that. Um, another thing you might need, this, it doesn't need to be a socket. This is actually to force the bearings back in. And uh, on particular, or in particular, this bike, these bearings, uh, these, uh, wow, bearings, seals, <laughs> sorry, these seals actually go in really easy, so you don't need much, you don't need a driver or anything like that, but this actually fits perfectly, it's the same size as the seal, so you can use that and hit it with your hand on the bottom of the fork tube to drive it in straight. Okay, so onto the bike, uh, first thing you're going to want to do is take the wheel off, and Easiest way to do it on these bikes is don't loosen the left side uh, clamp bolts. So you're going to want to leave that in there. That nut will actually stay right in there. Loosen the ones on the right side. That will let the axle come through. But that way you don't have to hold anything in this side to keep it from spinning. The clamps will hold it tight. And the axle will just unthread and come right out. So then you want to remove your brakes. Well, actually, you're going to have to remove your brakes before you remove the wheel. But you're going to want to take the brakes off and the fender off as well. Um, so once you get that done, next thing, and this is very important, is you're going to want to loosen the top cap on each fork before you unclamp it. So you're going to take your 30 millimeter socket, that's what that's for, and you're going to just break these loose. You don't need to take them all the way off. In fact, don't take them all the way off. Just break them loose. It'll make it a lot easier to take them off later when they're on the bench. Once you get those loosened, there's a couple six millimeter 
Allen's you need to loosen. There's one here on the top of the triple. There's one back here on the clip-on. And there's two down on the lower triple. Okay, I have mine all loosened. As you can see, the fork tube doesn't fall out. Usually it won't, but you might want to put something soft underneath just in case it does slip out or have somebody holding it, but usually they won't. So once you get those loosened, you just need to twist it a little and pull the fork tube out. Okay, now we've got the fork tube off the bike. Uh, one of the first things you're going to want to do is take off the dust seal right here. And all you have to do is take a little flathead screwdriver. Just go gentle with it. Just work your way around. It's hard to do with the camera. Holding the camera. Okay, once you get it started, it'll just slide right down. Just like that. And you can see up inside there, there's our bad seal. We're going to be changing on this one. Okay. Next, you're going to want to take the top cap off. I'm going to set this right on the ground. Okay, now that I've got the top cap loose, um, I can just slide the fork tube down. And what you're going to want to do right now is drain out as much fluid as you can out of this tube. And you can see it's really nasty. This obviously hasn't been changed in a long time. Now you're not going to get all of it out right now. But you want to get as much as you can out so it doesn't get all over your bench. Okay. Alright, so we've got most of that out now. Okay, now we're ready to use our spring compressor here. And all you're going to do is slide this down over and you're going to thread the rods into these little holes right here. Um, one thing you're going to want to do though is try to turn the top cap. Uh, I wish I could do this with one hand. Um, turn the top cap until you don't see it through this hole anymore. If you turn it, there'll actually be a gap in it. Yeah, you have to hold this tube while you spin this part. And uh, give me one second, I'll come back to it and show you what I mean. Okay, so now I've turned it, and you can actually see there's a gap here now. And that's going to allow you to screw in the threaded rod without hitting the top cap down inside. So, I'm going to go ahead and put that on now. Okay, so what I've done is I've tightened that into those holes, and I've stuck a wrench through the axle hole at the bottom, and I've hooked my ratchet straps to it, and I've tightened them up, and I've compressed the spring down just so the threaded rods touch on the outer tube. You don't want to go too far. It, that's as far as you can possibly go. Now this is where it kind of differs from both, m most bikes I've seen. Um, on most I've seen, once you compress the spring down far enough, you can actually see the nut here. Oops, you don't want to get crap in there. Bug. Um, on this model, you can't. You can't see it. It's down further. You actually have to lift this up and this is under tension, so once you get so high, you uh, you can't pull it up easily. So what you're going to want to do is put your foot down on the bottom tube, usually down on the where the brakes bolt on, and you're going to want to pull up. And as you pull up, you'll expose that nut. Sorry, this is upside down here. Okay, then you're going to take this tool that I was talking about earlier, and you're going to slide it in between the tube and the nut. Okay, so now I've slid that tool in between there, and that's going to hold it up in the air. Next thing you're going to want to do is take a 14mm uh, wrench on here and a um, pair of vice grips or an adjustable um, or larger box wrench on here, I mean an uh, open end wrench on here to hold this, and you're going to want to unscrew this top cap. Okay, now we've got the top cap loose. Uh, we have this nut loosened up. We can just remove the top cap. Set that up on the bench. And we're going to remove the rebound dampening rod. Or rebound adjuster rod. 
set this up on the bench. Be careful with that. It's pretty flimsy. You don't want to set anything heavy on it and bend it. Okay. So now, we take this little bolt, and not here, I was talking about earlier, and we're going to thread that onto the uh, piston rod. And it doesn't need to be tight at all. Like I said, the threads don't even have to match up as long as you can grab onto it. And what you're going to have to do is pull up on this now and remove this tool. Okay, so I've pulled up on it, I've removed the tool holding it in place, and now you can see why you uh, you need this bolt on here because that goes down in there quite a ways and if you didn't have that on there you wouldn't be able to reach it so that's bottomed out right now so you can still grab onto this and pull it up so now what you're going to want to do is uh, loosen up your straps and this is under pressure there is a spring in here so it is going to pop up a little bit but it's not like it's going to come up and hit the ceiling um, let's see if I can do this here one handed see there you go so unhook the other strap Okay, now you can take this off. Set that up on the bench. Okay, now you can take your spring out. Go slowly, because fluid will come out with it if you don't. Set that up on the bench. Alright, now what we're going to want to do is try to get rid of the rest of this fluid. So, we're going to dump this back in here. And you can pump that rod back and forth a few times too. That will actually help. Um, actually going to let go of the camera and get rid of the rest of this fluid out of here. Make sure you pump that rod back and forth about 10 times to try to get all the fluid out. Okay, now that you've got all the fluid drained out, uh, well you won't get it all out, but you'll get most of it out, uh, you should be able to slide the outer tube right off the inner tube. So just pull on it slowly. It'll catch a little bit, just be careful with it. Just keep pulling slowly. I can still see this. There we go. Okay, so now we got our outer tube out. Now you can see the seal that's in there. And this is what we're going to want to take out. Before we can get the seal out, there's a little locking clip in here. This holds the seal in. Uh, if you look closely, you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but it bulges out in four different places. So you just need to start at one of those places, usually on the end with a screwdriver and just pop it out. Comes out pretty easy. Set that aside. Okay, now I'm going to take a flathead screwdriver and I'm going to go right in between. There's a washer in here. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but there's a little washer and the seal. Just go right in between there and slowly pry it out. And just work your way around. There it goes. <laughs> Eventually it'll just pop right out. Okay, there's also this little washer down inside here. You don't need to remove that for any reason. You can just leave that right in there. Just uh, don't lose it. And now we're going to put the new seal in here. Okay, so one thing to note when you're putting the new seal in is these are directional. You'll see a flat surface here and a sort of coned surface on the other end. And you'll see writing on one side the writing faces out of the tube. Okay, so now we're going to put the new seal in. Now we're just going to set this right here. Um, be careful of these little springs. There's one on top, one on bottom. They actually come off pretty easily. So, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use that little, uh, let's see if I can get this to stay here. I'm going to use that socket I talked about earlier. And that just happens to fit right down in there and what I'm going to do is use that to pound in the new seal. Okay, I very gently pushed in the seal by pounding on this socket and you only need to get it in far enough to clear that little lip right there. 
That lip is where that ring goes back in the lock ring to hold the seal in. That's all you need to get it passed. It shouldn't be hard at all on this particular fork. Uh, they go in pretty easy. Okay, now we're going to reinstall our clip here. That just snaps right in, real easy. And we're going to put the two uh, tubes back together. Okay, now before we put the outer tube back on, we're going to want to replace your dust seal. So you're going to want to remove the old dust seal and replace it with a new one. That just slides on. Be kind of careful with it. This edge appears a little bit sharp. Just slide that all the way to the bottom. Okay, now we can reinstall our outer tube. Again, be really careful at the end. Don't force it on. Just twist it if you have to. Slide it down really slow. And when you get almost all the way down, you'll probably feel it hit something right there. Okay? All you gotta do is wiggle it a little bit. And it should go right past that. Just like that. Slide it all the way down. Okay, our next step is going to be filling the fluid. Um, the manual states that the fluid level with no spring in the tube and with the rod, the piston rod pushed all the way down, should be 101 millimeters from the top edge of the outer tube. So this is where our caliper comes into play. I've got it set at 101 or as close as you can get it. I mean, minuscule to move that. 0 0.01 so and we're going to use this feeler gauge at the bottom to uh, take a measurement so you're going to want to fill the tube up until the end of this just touches the fluid and while you're filling it you want to keep pumping up this rod up and down at least 10 times once you get the fluid all the way up uh, to get any air bubbles out before you take your final measurement okay so we've got our fluid filled uh, I've pumped the piston rod ten times up and down fully to get any air bubbles out and you want it it's all the way down position and we're going to take our caliper which I've already set to 101 millimeter and we're going to stick that down inside set it just on the outside edge of the tube and I don't know if you can see down in there or not let's see if I can get the camera in here, this is going to be kind of tricky I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but it's just touching the top of the fluid. And if you pull it out, you can actually see, maybe, on the bottom, there's just a little tint of fluid on it. Okay, so that's exactly how you want it. Once you get that done, you can reinsert the spring. Now, note, there's two ends of the spring. There's a small end, it's tapered a little bit, and there's a flat end. Probably it's kind of hard to see, but the tapered end goes up. Okay, so we're going to slide that down in there. Be really careful. You don't want to splash fluid out everywhere. Okay, once we've got our spring in, next step is to put the spring compressor back on. Slide that back down over. We're going to do the same thing with the ratchet straps. We're going to go ahead and put the ratchet straps on, and we're going to clamp this all the way back down again. Okay, so I've got the spring compressed. I have the little tool locking the nut back in place or the piston rod back in place. And next thing we're going to want to do is adjust this nut. Now you're going to want this nut at least uh, 13 millimeters or more. So I'm at 13.8. And the reason for that is we're going to adjust the top cap to factory specs here. Um, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to, but I would recommend zeroing everything back out. You will have to readjust your suspension after to your liking, but at least you know both forks are exactly even. So uh, we need to, need to leave enough room for the top cap. So let me set that over here. Uh, one thing you can do now so you don't forget is to reinstall the rebound rod.
So just slide that back down in there. And we can set that aside. Okay, so the next adjustment we're going to want to make is to the uh, rebound adjuster screw down inside here. If you can see that down in there. Okay, factory specs call for that to be 13 millimeters down from the bottom of this. So you're just going to use a flathead screwdriver and you're going to use your calipers with this here, the depth gauge, to measure down 13 millimeters from this surface to the surface of the nut, not down in the groove, but on the flat top surface. Okay, now I've got that adjusted down to 13.02, which is plenty close enough. So, now we're going to screw that back on. Screw the top cap back on, and you're going to do it until it just snugs up. You don't want to crank it down. Right there. So now it's tight. You can see it actually spins the rod. So that's tight enough. Now just tighten the nut up against the bottom of it. And that part's all done. I've got the, night the nut tightened and I have the uh, tool pulled back out so this slide back down inside. And uh, now we're going to loosen up the straps and let that pop back up again. Now we can take off our spring compressor. So now I've got the spring compressor all off, and the top cat is slid back down inside. You can just slide up the outer fork tube and screw the top cat back in. Now you don't have to get this real tight yet. Uh, once you get in the bike, you can tighten it back up. Uh, but once that's done, uh, we're ready to put it back in the bike. Now we got our fork tubes back in. And you get, now what you're going to want to do is set everything to factory specs. So factory specs say that the distance between uh, the top of this nut and the top of this nut should be 14 millimeters. Okay, so again you're going to want to take your calipers and you're going to want to measure the distance between the top of that nut and the top of that nut. And I have 14.55 so I'm going to have to tighten that down just a little bit. Fourteen point one, thirteen point nine nine. So we're pretty, pretty damn close. Okay. So now the last part is the rebound adjusting screw. You want to turn that all the way until it's tight, right there. So that's the last click right there that we can get. Okay. You're gonna to want to turn it back eight clicks. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's it. Do that to both sides, and you'll be right back at factory specs. Now you can adjust it from there, um, whether you want it uh, softer, or harder, or, you know, whatever you want. You can uh, you can readjust those. But at least now you know they're exactly the same on both sides. If you do that to both sides while you do this, so that's it. Now I can go ahead and put the wheel back on. And you should be all set, brand new seals.